Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I have here some sodium cyanide, a very useful chemical in many processes such as mining. In fact, that's what these pellets were originally made for. If I bring this over to the scale, now I'm going to shave off a little bit of the substance that was also used by the Nazis during World War II to kill people in their concentration camps. Because cyanide is very cheap, but also a very effective poison. Okay, so now I've got about 15 milligrams of that stuff. Let's close the shields on our scale, make sure we got, make sure that number's right. All right, we went up to 16, that's absolutely fine. So now I'm gonna take this and bring it over here to this glass of water. I'm gonna tip it in, just like this, a little thump, a little stir, and now I have a solution of sodium cyanide in water. Look at that. Just enough to smell the fact that it does actually smell a bit like roasted almonds. Now you guys are probably very afraid that I'm going to drink this. And, indeed, I am going to. There you go. Took a nice big swig of it. And now to prove that this actually is cyanide, let's uh, clean off my spoon here. I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, ferrous sulfate right here. Let's actually take just a very small amount. There we go. Give this another stir. That should turn a nice greenish yellow. This ferrous sulfate for you. And it might even start turning a little bit blue as Prussian blue is being formed in the solution here. Prussian blue is a pigment, also known as ferro-ferrocyanide. Now, to help the process along, I can add in a little bit of an acid, how about a lemon? Give this a squeeze, put some of the lemon juice in there. That acidifies the solution, making the test more sensitive. There we go. That should be enough to detect that small amount of cyanide. As you can see, the solution has turned a nice bright blue color as the ferro-ferrocyanide is being precipitated from the solution. Now that uh, coloring actually means that the cyanide has been completely destroyed and is now completely safe and non-toxic. In fact, that coloring was once used in blueprints for the blue ink. I'm starting to feel a little bit of the effects of the cyanide. You can see I got a little bit of a tremor here. Um, my breathing is a, just slightly more rapid, but other than that, if I didn't know that I drank cyanide, I probably wouldn't even know I was poisoned. Because the lethal dose of cyanide for someone my size is roughly 300 milligrams, and I probably drank less than five here. The amount that I drank is not nearly enough to kill me, as some of you may have already guessed. What makes a poison is not the fact that it is a dangerous chemical. What makes it a poison is the dose. In fact, uh, let's come back over to the scale and let's weigh out a potentially lethal dose and see how much larger that is. Alright, 371 milligrams. So if I were to eat that, I'd have a pretty decent chance of dying. Probably right around 60, 60%. I'm fairly strong, so it might even be lower, like 50 or 40. But in order to be poisoned by cyanide, I'd have to absorb this much in a very short period of time. In fact, my liver has already destroyed most of the cyanide in my system. It only takes maybe five, ten minutes before the cyanide is completely used up. Larger doses would of course take longer, but, but your liver is actually very good at destroying cyanide because cyanide naturally occurs in seeds and nuts of many fruits, such as apples and almonds. So cyanide's not something that your body is not used to dealing with. And if you took this amount and ate small portions of it over a 24-hour period, you'd probably be fine. I'm actually going to put this back in my jar here. So nobody comes by and eats it. 